Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. In this video, I'm gonna be going through all the trees that I have planted uh, in this yard uh, since I moved in here 23 years ago. I'm actually selling this house, but I wanted to do a quick tour of all the trees and how they look. Uh, some of them have been in the ground for a long time. Some of them have only been in the ground for a year or two, so they're quite a bit smaller, but we can see how the growth habit is going to you know, look over time. I think at this point, you can get some idea of uh, picking some sort of ornamental tree or shade tree uh, for your yard. Uh, maybe from this video. So uh, let's get started uh, over here on the east side of my house and I'll work my way around. So the first tree I'm going to start with is this Japanese snowbell. You can see it's a really nice uh, straight trunk here. This one is about 10 feet tall now probably. It was about six or seven feet when I planted it. Most of the trees you're going to see in this video I have uh, videos on the channel for. Uh, this Japanese snowbell, this variety is called snow cone gets beautiful bell-shaped white flowers uh, in the spring. This is a great tree for a small lot. You see how vertical the branching is on it. It's gonna stay nice and narrow. Uh, really great choice. Most of you watching this can grow this, uh, this tree. It's pretty, pretty hardy. The lightly fragrant white flowers in the spring, beautiful yellow fall foliage, uh, little berries here where the, stepped in a hole on the way over there, little berries here where the uh, flowers were in the spring, little fruits there. Uh, the next uh, tree we'll take a look at right here is this is a uh, Chinese fringe tree right here. There's a native fringe tree as well. Uh, this Chinese French tree has a, uh, the flowers are a little more longer lasting and definitely a showier tree than the native. Um, I'll likely put a native one in in the new house uh, when I go there because I'm going to do uh, about half that yard in natives. And uh, same thing, it gets these uh, uh, little fruit here where the uh, flowers were in the spring and uh, they turn purple. I think you can see that one straight ahead right there. Another really nice tree. This one will spread a little more. It's gonna be much slower growing uh, than that uh, snowbell was back there. Um, not a very fast growing tree at all, but it will get about as wide as it does tall in that 20, 25 foot by 20, 25 foot range, probably something like that. Uh, the next tree up here is a blood good Japanese maple right here. Beautiful, beautiful tree. I've got this on the east side of my house. It gets lots and lots of morning sun and then it's in the shade the rest of the day. And uh, you see it still has some decent color on it here at the end of August. Normally these are pretty tattered uh, at this point. And so uh, having some afternoon shade on it has definitely, uh, definitely helped with that. But this is an upright Japanese maple. It's gonna get big. Um, not shade tree big, but uh, definitely a, a good size ornamental tree, you know, in the 20, 25 foot range, something like that. I'm gonna swing around here. Um, Hopefully I can back up here far enough. This is my uh, Yoshino, or actually a Kwanzaan cherry right there. And it's about 30 feet tall and about 30 feet wide. Uh, foliage is in great shape for the end of the summer like this. Gets beautiful fall foliage on it in, uh, in my yard. And the reason that mine holds up better is because it's in this big giant bed space. It's not competing with lawn. The uh, other ones in my neighborhood that have defoliated at this point are definitely uh, competing with the lawn. This one gets the big uh, double pink flower clusters on it in the spring. That lasts a goodly amount of time. The wind can really work on these. If you get a windy day or a heavy storm, it can kind of shorten the flowering on it, but what a beautiful tree. Uh, this right here is this vanilla twist red bud that I show in a lot of videos just because I love this tree. But again, the foliage is held up um, pretty nicely over here um, for this late in the summer. This one is a uh, white flowering weeping red bud called Vanilla Twist. This would be another uh, great ornamental tree in a, uh, in a small lot. Won't get a whole lot taller than it is right now, but you can see it's getting wider. It's a lot wider than it was when I planted it. Okay, I'm gonna swing around here and I've got this uh, snow fountain weeping cherry right here. It's already starting to get a little, little bit of its yellow fall color on it. This one's like a light, um, this was a white variety right here. There are light pink varieties uh, as well, and even darker pink varieties. These, the height on these is gonna be determined by where the graft is. This is a, what I would call a low graft right here. It's only about four feet off the ground where the graft is. So it'll get taller than this, but not substantially. You can get a, a, a graft that's you know six or seven feet up, would make for a much taller plant, but I wanted something over here that was uh, in this size range. Uh, the tree right here is a golden rain tree. 
This has beautiful yellow flowers in the spring, then gets these uh, lantern uh, seed pods on it. Actually comes with its own insect, a beetle that eats those seeds. And luckily a beetle eats those seeds because otherwise they come up everywhere. This is a bit of a, a, bit of a noxious weed. It's a beautiful, beautiful tree, super, super showy. Um, but again, it, uh, <laughs> it can come up all over the place. It's missing part of the side right here because there was another uh, shade tree right here that shaded the west side of this one. So it's going one direction. It really kind of needs to be chopped off right here to even it out, but that is a golden rain tree. So here's a willow oak right here. This is all shade tree uh, and it gets gigantic. I planted uh, this, I don't know how tall this tree is now. It's probably in the 50 foot range, at least oh, definitely over 40. Uh, I planted this as a whip, uh, we call it, which was a teeny little tree in a quart pot. Um, that was a seedling from a greenhouse. It was maybe two feet tall at the time that I planted it 23 years ago. You can see how big and uh, beautiful it is. Some people don't like willow oaks. They have the small leaves. They're a little harder to get up. Um, I do not rake leaves. I just use them as mulch. So it doesn't bother me at all that they're smaller leaves. I'm heading over here uh, across the front yard. I have this uh, beautiful, uh, purple foliage red bud right here, which uh, forest pansy um, leaves out purple in the spring and it stays purple until it gets really, really hot. And then uh, the leaves do green up quite a bit on it, but you can see how beautiful this tree is. It's got really a old gnarly bark, this incredible shape uh, down at the base of it. I've shown this tree in several videos, including a all about red buds tree, if you want to, or video, if you want to see that, just a beautiful, specimen of a tree it may be 30 feet across at this point and uh um, maybe 20 feet tall something like that uh definitely wider than tall so that's one thing you have to keep in mind with this but there are weeping uh purple foliage red buds as well above it right there is a dawn redwood i planted this about 23 years ago it was about three feet tall when i planted it i do not know how tall that is now probably 50 feet at this point dawn redwoods are really really beautiful stunningly beautiful trees get kind of a funky orangey fall color on them this, this is actually a deciduous conifer so it loses its foliage in the winter time really really beautiful in the winter time it's got amazing bark on it great tree and you'd think a tree of this size would have big giant cones on it it's got teeny tiny little cones um, where it produces its seeds but beautiful tree I've made it over to the west side of my house. This is a uh, purple crepe myrtle that uh, is always in the backdrop to uh, my videos, any video that I do on the, uh, on the front porch here. Uh, really beautiful uh, uh, variety called Petite Plum. It's uh, coming into its third round of flowering. Uh, a, lot of people a lot of times people ask me what happened to the flowers on a video and then the next week it's in full bloom again. This one just kind of, kind of blooms on and off, or, or we'll get a bad storm and it'll knock the open flowers off and then the next round will uh, come on it. Uh, if we move down uh, this side here, I'm in the middle of uh, pine strawing and a bunch of other projects here. Uh, I've got a, uh, another dwarf uh, crepe myrtle here that I had planted in a video. Uh, this is one of the magic um, varieties here, uh, fuchsia is uh, I think this one is what this one's called, Magic Fuchsia. Uh, but that's been there for a year and a half and that's all it's grown. It was in full flower just a few weeks ago. Really uh, striking flower on that one. Nice variety. We'll cut across uh, through here. I guess I have three figs here. Um, the people do call figs trees, but they're actually shrubs. So we'll move on from those. I've got one of these uh, Delta series. This is a Delta Fusion crepe myrtle here and it's still blooming. It's been blooming pretty much the whole summer. Nice kind of medium pink flowers and that beautiful, beautiful dark foliage on it. Super, super striking tree right there. I've got some gardenias over here that are uh, back in full bloom. Again, I'm working on pine straw and this is about as far as I've made it across the yard. I'm gonna go over here. This is this Empress of China dogwood. This is an evergreen dogwood right here. It gets absolutely covered in flowers in the late spring and through the summer. And then the flowers develop into these little 
fruits here that eventually will look kind of like uh, little strawberries. Very interesting tree right there. Um, cutting through here. This is a Don Egoff a Chinese red bud right here. It hasn't done a whole lot of growing. It's new from last year and they're kind of slow to get started. Leaves are a little beat up on it. This is pretty typical of what you would see, you know, late summer on a tree like this. It's been, those are the same leaves that came on it in April. And it's had to live with them all spring, everything that's come along and sampled them. Um, that's one thing about going back to this uh, Chinese dogwood here. Just look how good the foliage looks, even this late in the season. So that's really, really nice. Uh, okay, over this way, going up higher here, uh, this is a heritage uh, river birch right here. Uh, big, giant, three trunk river birch. I would guess it's somewhere in the 35, 40 foot range uh, at this point. It has the beautiful peeling bark that other river birches have, but this one is super, super heat tolerant. And it is not minded, you know, being in my uh, flat, uh, dry, corner of my yard back here uh, most uh this is another plant people put them in the wrong place in their lawn and they're defoliated by now the foliage on mine still looks great i do have a bunch of uh, caterpillars up in there and i don't care i let them do their thing don't need to kill everything uh, but come down here to the bottom you can see the trunk on this thing it's really gigantic it has the beautiful uh peeling bark this is a really gorgeous tree right here. This is off my deck, which is on the north side of my house. This right here is a uh, white dogwood. This is a native dogwood. This one just uh, came up here on its own. Gets absolutely covered in white flowers in the spring. I've put photos of this one on Instagram many times, but uh, it was just a seedling that came up in this spot. It's really, uh, really done incredibly well, but that's a great option on the north side of a house. Um, not many trees would have to tolerated this kind of shade. And then the sun comes over here for about six weeks in the summertime and really cooks this side of the house. And so uh, this tree has been adaptable to both of those things. Above it up there is a Yoshino cryptomeria that's about 40 feet tall. Right there people plant these as screening plants frequently and uh, hopefully you can see see that. It's a beautiful, beautiful conifer. But uh, they do get gigantic and then they get super thin down at the bottom. I think you can see um, through there, Holly's walking over there, but it's just the trunk down at the bottom. So it's not a very good screening plant for six foot tall people, but it's a very good screening plant for 40 feet tall people. So just keep that in mind. I don't think this is a great screening plant, but I see Yoshino cryptomeria is used all the time for screening. But again, they thin at the bottom and that's where you kind of want the screen. Uh, and then right here's a thundercloud plum. It's seen better days. It's beautiful right now. It's got the purple foliage and has incredible, uh, like light to, med to medium pink flowers in the spring. Really, really beautiful tree. It's uh, been stressed for a while. It's got some issues down at the bottom of it on the bark and uh, some splitting uh, down at the bottom. It's got some uh, water sprouts, which are these vertical branches that are growing on it. Uh, I don't know how many more years it's going to live, but it's still beautiful right now and it's super, super showy. Uh, in the spring, so I've continued to, uh, you know, to, to leave it here and not. Um, maybe I could cut the water sprouts out, all the vertical branching that's in it, and then actually cut the tree back, you know, maybe 20 or 25 percent, and fertilize it in the spring. It's gonna it would take a lot of work. This tree's 25 feet tall, so I've got to, uh, you know, be a lot of work to do. But maybe it could be rescued. Uh, I don't know, but I actually think it's a, uh, its days are numbered. So thank you very much for watching this video. I have videos for almost every tree uh, that you saw in this video if you wanna go and look them up individually on my channel. I also have a full tour video coming up here uh, that will probably include some of these trees again as well later in the week and uh, most of the shrubs that are in this yard as well. Thank you very much for watching. Yeah. What you doing? You gonna be in the video? You just wanna be in the video. Always wanna be in the video, don't you? Come here. Come here. Come here, girl. Okay. Okay.
just want to be in the video. Okay, all right. So, so, okay, all right. So thank you, okay, all right. Okay, all right, so thank you very, okay, all right. What are you doing? Okay. All right, so, th okay, all right, okay. So, Holly, don't show me your butt. Don't show me your butt. Turn around, turn around here. Come here, come here. If you want to be in the video, you can be in the video, but just don't show me your butt, okay?